Joshua's Accounting Lessons page. I am Trixie, a sophomore VS Management Accounting student. Today, Joshua will be discussing business planning and short-term budgetary systems. We will learn how to prepare an operating and financial budget for a manufacturing entity. At the end of the video, we students are expected to explain the importance of business planning, define and explain what budgeting is, enumerate the objectives of budgeting, explain the different benefits of budgeting, define what a master budget is and enumerate its components, and prepare a master budget. Please do not forget to like this video, share it with your friends and classmates, and subscribe to Search US Accounting Lessons page. Also, please click the notification bell button to alert you of Search US latest video lessons. Lastly, please comment your comments, suggestions, and reactions. And now, here's our management accounting trainer to teach us business planning and budgeting, Prof. Kevin Troy M. Chua. Hello everybody, welcome to Sertua's Accounting Lessons PH. And today we will be discussing business planning and short-term budgetary systems. Thank you very much for trusting Sertua's Accounting Lessons PH as your online learning partner. And our today's featured subscriber is Ms. Christine Joyce Basco from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Hi Christine Joyce, thank you very much for your support for Sertua's Accounting Lessons PH. And our previous lesson is about standard costing and variance analysis as applied to cost control. So you know how to do standard costing already and how to interpret variances and you have applied it on the concept of control. And now we are to move on to another tool that managers can use in both planning, decision making and even in controlling which is budgeting or the preparation of a master budget. Let's now talk about business planning. Whether on a short-term perspective or a long-term perspective, planning is an important ingredient to the success of an entity. It serves as the starting point of everything. It's important for managers to determine the starting point. Kasi, syempre, to become profitable, kailangan talaga paplanuhin mo muna yan, di ba? You know where to start. Ano ba talaga ang gagawin natin at paano natin ito uumpisahan? So, siyempre, paplanuhin mo, di ba? And that's actually one of the first function of management, which is planning. So, basically, on a short-term perspective about profitability or even long-term perspective like capital budgets or maybe some more acquisitions or long-term acquisitions or investments, kailangan taga pinaplano yan because ang plano mo will become or will serve as the starting point of everything. Now, profit planning refers to the short-term setting of goals and objectives on how to become profitable. The focus of this lesson is actually the short-term setting of goals, which is kaya ka nga magbabudget, it's because we want to know kung ano yung dapat natin planuhin at ano yung dapat natin gawin para masagot yung mga goals and objectives na isaset natin. Okay? So, ito pong uh, budgeting na pag-uusapan natin is actually a tool for profit planning. Okay, it's a tool to plan something. It's a tool for you to understand and for you to know what does the entity really need to do in order for them na maging profitable. So, pupunta ka ngayon sa starting point mo, which is profit planning. There is a need to plan and budget resources to determine how to properly maximize these resources for the attainment of the entity's goals and objectives. As you know, resources are scarce. Hindi mayaman ng resources and uh, we know that concept actually in economics that human wants are unlimited but we need to uh, maximize yung uh, scarce resources na meron, to, na meron tayo. So uh, in, in business entities, ganun din. No? We want to maximize profits. We want to maximize maximize uh, our goals and objectives pero how can we maximize it dapat din syempre yung resources na meron tayo is ma-maximize din natin kahit scarce yan so kailangan mo talagang planuhin kasi hindi siya steady stream of water na pwede ka lang kumuha o sumalok basta-basta hindi kasi ganoon ang resources natin kaya kailangan natin planuhin Budgeting now comes as a highly important factor in planning business operations. So dahil hindi naman agad-agad or basta-basta nakukuha ang resources natin, hindi rin naman siya agad-agad ganun napapalitan, kailangan mong planuhin. Okay? And the tool that you can use in business planning is what you call budgeting or the preparation of a master budget. What is budgeting? 
Budgeting is the process where an entity translates their operations in quantitative terms to represent it as its planned operations, activities, and production for a specific time period in consideration. Budgeting po ay ito po yung kung ano man pong nasa isip mo, translate mo na siya quantitatively. No? Numeric na. E magkano ba talaga ang gusto nating kitain? No? And to do that, uh, what are the, how many units should we sell? And how much should be the sales level? And uh, kung yun ang sales level, na, sales level natin, ilan yun dapat natin ma-produce dyan? And kung ilan yun dapat natin i-produce, so magkano i-purchase nating materials for that. So, sunod-sunod, no? So, yung gusto nating ma-achieve na goals and objectives, you need to plan it. And uh, budgeting is a way to plan those operations. Pero ngayon, ang trans, uh, it, it, it becomes translated quantitatively. Okay? Makikita mo niya numerically ano ba yung pinaplano mong mangyari. Okay? So, budgeting helps in planning operations kasi it becomes your starting point and it will guide you throughout kung ano ba talaga yung gusto sana nating mangyari. And it also will help you in controlling operations. Ito naman yung after, no? Kasi with the budgets that you have, i-compare mo siya sa actual operations, it becomes a uh, tool for controlling as well. Kasi doon natin makikita yung mga variances natin ng uh, budget versus sa actual. So, over budget ba tayo? Or under budget? Or yung atin po bang goals and objectives ay na-achieve natin or hindi? Okay? And syempre, it will also help you in cost management. Kasi kung ito lang ang nakabudget natin, ba't tayo nag-over budget? Or kung ito ang nakabudget natin, bakit tayo nakatipid? Diba? So, meron din tayong variance analysis na gagawin no? kapag uh, you will now be comparing your budgets with the actual operations that you did. However, the focus of this lesson is more on the preparation of the master budget rather than the variance analysis inside it. Okay? So, yun po yung pag-aaralan natin ngayon at yun po yung sinasabi nating budgeting. Well, actually, uh, kayo rin naman po, eh, di ba, ang resources natin scarce. So, in personal finance, di ba, eh, tayo rin po, syempre, nagbabudget din tayo na uh, tatagal ba yung 1,000 sa akin ng isang linggo, di ba, or tatagal ba sa akin yung ganitong amount. So, syempre, anong gagawin mo? Paplanuhin mo, magbabudget ka. Di ba? So, ganun din po ang ginagawa ng entity. Kaya tayo gagawa ng ang budgets is because kailangan po nilang planuhin kasi nga po yung resources natin na ginagamit scar, uh, scars. Hindi po siya steady stream flowing of water forever na pwede ka lang sumalok na sumalok ng tubig hanggat gusto hindi po kasi ganun yung resources na ginagamit ng isang entity. So, what happens is that kailangan po talagang planuhin yung mga uh, resources natin and budgeting will help you do that. Okay. So, here are the objectives of budgeting. Number one, a budget should be able to provide a realistic estimate of income and expenses because it will help you plan uh, what you want to do and what you want to achieve. So, it should be able to provide you a realistic estimate. Magkano po ba yung ina-expect nating income from our operations and the expenses there unto? And you will be matching that for you to know if you're profitable or not. And then, second one is a budget should provide a coordinated plan of action for the entity. Kasi it will serve as your guidance eh. Ito binudget natin so dapat ma-achieve natin ito. ba? So it becomes now a guidance for the entity to follow. Most especially in production. Number three, a budget should serve as a control mechanism that can be used in performance evaluation by being able to check results and suggest future corrective actions. So, kung ang function ng budgeting before is planning, sa after naman po, nagiging control tool siya or control mechanism na. You will now be comparing it with um, the present or you will now be uh, the, the actual activity rather. So, you will be comparing your budget with your actual activity. So, check mo yung results. San tayo nag-over budget, san tayo nag-under budget, or san tayo sumobra, san tayo favorable, san tayo unfavorable. And then, from that, you can draw corrective actions and you will know where to stay, where to strengthen, and what to stop. Okay? Number four, a budget should provide guidance to the management as what I've told you in number two, since it uh, provides us a coordinated plan of action, it becomes a guidance on what to do. 
Number five, budget should help in decision making in relation to number three because it will give you suggestions for future corrective actions. What happens is that it will help you now decide the next thing to do. And number six, a budget should be able to improve communication, coordination, and harmonious operations within the entity. Kasi isa-isa kayo ng goal. So it provides goal congruence. No? Hindi kayo nagkakaiba-iba ng goals kasi yung ginagamit yung budget or yung nagiging guiding principles nyo or yung guide nyo is iisa lang ang pinanggagalingan which is your budgets. So yun po. Yun po ang objectives ng budgeting. Ngayon, uh, always remember po that budgeting will help us, number one, in planning. Pinakauna po kasi yan. Number two, performance evaluation kasi matche-check po natin yung uh, budget natin sa actual performance or actual production. And it also helps in coordination kasi nag-guide ang management at yung production sa dapat mangyari. It also is a tool for control as of what I told you earlier. And it's also a motivating uh, tool. No? Pwede siyang gamitin as tool for motivation lalo na kapag gagamitin mo yung budgets bilang metric para. O sige, pag naabot nyo yung ganitong ko you will be having commission. So, nakaka-motivate din siya kapag ginamit niyo yung budgeting on that perspective. And then, it also promotes positive behavior in the entity. Oops, what happened? Okay, yun pala. Okay, next po tayo. Ano naman po makukuha natin sa budgeting? No? Number one, it compels managers to think ahead. So, hindi na, sa pagbabudget po kasi dahil paplanuhin na natin, ang thinking po natin, diretso na, di ba? focus ka lang dapat. <laughs> Parang familiar yun. <laughs> focus ka lang dapat, di ba? Okay. And then, it also provides an opportunity <laughs> to re-evaluate existing activities and evaluate new ones. Dahil nagiging tool siya for control and performance evaluation, nalalaman natin yung mga dapat nating baguhin, dapat nating itigil, at mga dapat nating i-continue. Okay. It also aids managers in communicating objectives and coordinating actions across the organization. So, yun po yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na nagiging uh, way siya for guidance no, sa buong organization kung ano ba talaga dapat yung mangyari. And lastly, it provides benchmarks to evaluate subsequent performance. So, nagiging ano po siya para nagiging, kumbaga sa standard costing, eh, siya yung standards natin. No, ito namang budgets po natin is it will help you um, evaluate performance because it serves as your benchmark. It serves as your guidance na, o dapat ganito. So, check natin kung bakit hindi ganun yung nangyari, or check natin kung, uy, we did well. ba? We did well. So, ano yung dapat nating ituloy na gagawin. Okay? So, yun po yung benefits ng budgeting. Now, let's talk about a master budget. A master budget is regarded as a comprehensive financial planning tool that highlights operating budgets, budgeted financial statements, and financial plans. So, yan po yung gagawin natin today. Okay? Isa po siyang financial planning tool kasi lahat po ay nandyan halos. Which is composed of two major components. Composed of components. Okay. Uh, redundant. <laughs> okay. So, we have uh, operating budget and your financial budget. Okay? Ang operating budget po ay ang budget plan natin which is dedicated po saan? Sa lahat ng ating sales, production, and operating expenses. So, basically, operationally, yan po yung laman niya, which will lead you in the creation of your budgeted income statement. And then, your financial budget will be dedicated into the cash budget, your budgeted financial statements, and any related capital acquisitions. Financial budget po yan. So, let's talk about the components of them one by one. Operating budget and financial budget. Under operating budget, we have the sales budget, which is your budget that presents to you the level of sales for a certain period. Coming from that sales requirements, you will now determine kung ito ang sales na gusto nating ma-achieve, ilan ang dapat nating i-produce. Ang tawag po doon, production budget. Okay? And kung ganun karami po yung kailangan nating i-produce, how much of that should be purchased or how many materials should be purchased? So that 
will lead you in the creation of your purchases. Now, coming also from your production budget, dahil lalabas dyan yung production requirements, you will now also be able to prepare your di direct labor budget and the overhead budget. If you now have your materials, labor, and overhead components, you can now create the unit cost for one product. Kaya po, kung ano man po yung nasa sales budget mo, you can translate it also to become your cost of sales budget kasi may unit cost ka na for your products. And then, syempre, coming from that, sales minus cost of goods sold, gross profit, less operating expenses. Kailangan din po, may budget po, yung mga potential operating expenses na may incur ng company. As you can see, siya po lahat ay related sa income statement. Kaya po, ang ating pong master, ah, sorry, ang ating pong operating budget will lead you in the creation of your budgeted income statement. Pagdating naman po sa financial budget, syempre, ito pong ating mga items dito ay merong cash outlay, di ba? Pasahod sa empleyado, nasa direct labor. Gagastos ka for overhead, nandyan. Magpa-purchase ka ng materials, nandyan. Magbabayad ka ng operating expenses, pero kikita ka naman or makakakolek ka ng cash sa sales budget. So, maikokonek mo na po siya sa iyong financial budget. And number one of that, syempre, is your cash budget and any related capital acquisitions in case meron. And then, syempre, nandiyan na rin po yung uh, creation natin ng budgeted financial statements, which is your balance sheet, and then, uh, which will come from here as well, yung inyong budgeted income statement, and then cash flows and retained earnings. May mga textbooks po na ang budgeted income statement ay under ng operating budget kasi daw po ang budgeted income statement is the income statement or the end point of your production. Kaya siya nasa operating budget. Meron naman po mga books na ang income statement ay nasa financial budget because it is a pro forma financial statement. So, ang ituturo ko sa inyo, the income statement is actually both an operating budget and a financial budget component. Okay? It serves as a financial budget component because it is a pro forma FS, but it serves also in the operating budget because it is the uh, end point of your, or it's the translation of your uh, budgeted production. Diba? So, pareho lang. No? May mga books kasing nasa financial budget siya, may mga books nasa operating. Although, by nature, ang budgeted income statement po kasi it's based on production and sales. Eh. So, kung tatanungin niya rin ako, eh, saan po ba mas bagay ilagay ang budgeted income statement? Siyempre sa operating budget because it relates to your operations. It's just that na isama rin siya sa financial budget kasi it will also affect your cash budget kasi. And after all, it's a pro forma financial statement. Okay? So, yun po yung ating issue sa budgeted income statement. Uh, pero ang mahalaga naman is magawa nyo siya ng tama. Okay, budgeting process tayo. Now, for the budgeting process, you start with your sales budget. Kasi dyan mo malalaman kung, or dyan mo kasi isa set, rather, ilang units ba talaga ibibenta ko? Okay? And if in this number, in these number of units, is ito yung kailangan ko mabenta, ilan ang dapat kong maproduce? So, gagawa ka na ngayon ng production budget. Okay? So, lalabas dyan sa production budget yung requirements mo for your direct materials, requirements mo as to labor, and yung requirements mo as to overhead. Pagkakaroon ka na ng product cost per one unit kapag natapos mo yung production budget. Pero syempre, coming from your, produ from your production budget, ilan ang dapat kong i-purchase? Basically, sa materials. No? So, dyan din po mismo lumalabas yung ating inventory levels, yung beginning and ending inventories natin. Okay? And then, you can also proceed now with your cost of goods sold budget kasi kung ilan yung sales na, na in units mo, you just have to multiply it dun po sa ating unit cost per product, magagawa mo yung cost of goods sold. So, may gross profit ka na. Ready ka na to budget your operating expenses. Kaya po, ito mismo ang iyong budgeted income statement. Now, after that, syempre, yung mismong budgeted income statement mo, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, Sa sales po ay meron tayo ang cash collections. Sa iyo pong direct labor overhead, may cash outlay. Magpapurchase ka ng materials, may cash outlay din. Okay? And then you will also pay for your operating expenses. So what happens is that all of those will also become part of your cash budget, which is uh, which shows you all of the cash collections, cash disbursements, and also any uh, financing or any borrowings and interest payments that you need. Kasama rin po dyan yung acquisitions natin ng mga long-term assets at saka po payment natin ng dividends. Okay? So 
now that I've mentioned po yung um, acquisition ng assets, syempre, kailangan mo rin ng capital acquisition budget dahil may cash outlay din yan na i-relate mo sa cash budget. And then, kapag are ready na lahat yan, you can now prepare your pro forma financial statements and any other balances that you have is pwede mong i-connect sa iyong budgeted financial statements. And that is our budgeting process. Okay, so yun po. At dahil marunong na tayo ng process ng budgeting, we are now ready to prepare your master budget and we will be doing it through a comprehensive problem. Start na tayo. Let's start with your sales budget. Si Alvarez Manufacturing is preparing budgets for the quarter ending June 30. Budgeted sales for the next five months are April 20,000 units, May 50,000 units, and June 30,000 units. So ang medyo relate lang sa atin dito is yung hanggang June. Kasi for the quarter ending June 30, that's April, May, and June. Okay? But we still need this information like July and August later. The selling price is $10 per unit and this is how you prepare your sales budget. Ganto lang kasimple. So the name of the company and then you write sales budget and the period covered. The first thing you need to do is to list down the budgeted sales in units, which is 20,000 units for April, 50,000 units for May, and 30,000 units for June, which is equal to 100,000 units sold for quarter two, or you plan to sell 100,000 uh, units by quarter two. You just have to multiply it by the selling price per unit, which is 10, and then multiply yan ha, hindi multiple, multiply by, okay? And that becomes your budgeted sales revenue. So 20,000 times 10, 200,000. 50,000 times 10 is 500,000. And 30,000 times 10 is 300,000. So for quarter two, your budgeted sales is 1 million pesos. Ay, sorry, 1 million dollars. So yung sales budget mo po, yan na yung sales revenue mo, ba? So it will be forwarded sa inyo pong uh, budgeted income statement later on. And it will also be forwarded sa iyong schedule of cash collections kasi syempre, yung mga sales mo na yan is makaka-receive ka naman ng cash or you will have cash collections from them. Okay? So, yun po yun. So, you will be creating a schedule of cash collections from them. Ganyan lang po kasimple ang sales budget. You just have to translate the number of units into dollar sales or peso sales. Let's now move on to the schedule of expected cash collections. Now, Let's say, for example, for C. Alvarez Manufacturing, that all sales are on account. And then, the collection patter pattern is 70% of your sales on account is collected in the month of sale. So, ibig sabihin, kung nabenta mo siya ng April, you will get 70% in April din mismo. And then, 25% collected in the month following the sale. So, your April sales, 70% of that will be received in April then, And then, 25% will be received in May. Kasi month following the sale. However, sadly, we will have a 5% uncollectability percentage in anticipation that there will be customers that will not be paying their account balances. Now, for the purposes of our discussion, let's assume that the March 31 accounts receivable is $30,000 and it will be collected in full for the month of April. Okay, so this is your preparation of your expected cash collections. You start with your budgeted sales revenue. Sabi natin on account siya, so gagamitin natin yung 70-25-5% rule na sa pagpe-prepare po natin ng schedule of cash collection on sales. So you start with your March 31 accounts receivable of 30,000 that will be received in April. So ilalagay mo siya sa column ng April kasi nga, siyempre, makokollecta mo siya sa April. Now, your budgeted sales of 200,000 will be distributed like this. On April sales, 70% will be collected on the month of sale. So 200,000 multiplied by 70% is 140,000. Now, the next 25% will be collected next month. So 200,000 sales in April multiplied by 25% is $50,000. Pero nasa column na po siya ng May kasi May mo na po siya receive 
Now, saan po mapupunta yung 5%? Dahil ang pinag-uusapan lang po natin ay cash collections dito, wala na po tayong ilalagay na 5% kasi uncollectible na po siya. And the same thing that you will be doing for May. Since your May sales is 500,000, 70% of that will be collected in that month and 25% will be collected by June. And then, tuloy natin for June, your June sales is just 300,000 times 70%. Dahil ang end ng quarter natin ay June, hindi ko napapakita yung July dito. Pero pagdating mo ng July, <laughs> syempre na sa labas, pagdating mo ng July, yung 25% mo ng 300,000 becomes collected in July naman. Okay? So, ganun po yung ating budgets. Then, you just have to get the total per column. And that is your total cash collections for the quarter. $170,000 by April, $400,000 by May, $335,000 by June, with a total collection of $905,000 for the second quarter of the year. And those cash collections will be forwarded later sa atin pong cash budget under cash collections. Basically, ang budgeting po kasi is... Um, ano yan eh, susundin mo lang talaga kung ano yung sinabi sa problem. As in talagang bibigyan ka ng problem ng instructions, susundin mo siya kung paano mo gagawin. Kasi kung hindi mo siya susundin, hindi mo masasagot yung problem ng budgeting. Okay, so dapat sundin mo yung sinabi sa problem para magawa mo ng maayos yung master budgets mo. Okay, diretso tayo with your production budget. Siyempre, we have something in mind na na ibebenta. Ang tanong, ilan ipoproduce natin? Okay? The management of C. Alvarez Manufacturing once ending inventory at the end of each month, ha, be equal to the 20% of the following month's budgeted sales in units. So, ang gusto nilang mangyari, ang ending inventory daw nila at that specific month is equal to 20% ng sales natin next period. Kukuhanin mo lang yung 20% ng sales ng uh, next period, yun yung desired ending inventory nila. For purposes of our discussion, our uh, uh, inventory on March 31, which is the ending inventory at quarter 1, is 4,000 units, which will be the beginning inventory for quarter 2. And this is how you prepare your production budget. You start with your... Uh, heading. <laughs> Siyempre, heading muna. Okay? Production budget. Okay, so paano po ang gagawin natin? Ang first line mo ay siyempre your budgeted sales in units. No? Nabanggit na natin yan kanina. 20,000 for April, 50,000 for May, and 30,000 for June for a total for quarter 2 of 100,000 units. I-add natin sa kanya si desired ending inventory. Kasi kung ito yung ibebenta natin at ito yung ending inventory natin, ito yung magiging needs natin this period eh, na kailangan. So, kung ito ang ating ending inventory, 10,000. So, i-add ko siya para lalabas yung ilan ba dapat talaga yung ipoproduce ko without thinking of any beginning inventory. Parang ganun muna. Ngayon, ang tanong, paano kunin tong desired ending inventory? Sabi sa inyo, 20% siya ng sales mo next period. Yun daw yung gusto nilang maging ending inventory. So, what you will do is kunin mo yung sales next period, i-multiply mo siya sa 20%, yun na yung desired ending inventory mo. Okay? So, ganun po siya. 30,000 units daw po yung total units na needed natin. So, kung iisipin mo, kung wala kang beginning inventory, 30,000 units yung dapat nyong i-produce. Ngayon, ide-deduct mo si uh, beginning inventory kasi that represents na, okay, we need 30,000 units to answer 20,000 units of sales and 10,000 na ending inventory. Eh, kaso may natira pa naman tayong 4,000. So, ang ipoproduce lang natin, 26,000. To answer our requirement of 30,000, we have 4,000 from beginning inventory and 26,000 na kailangan nating i-produce this period. Ganun lang. Okay? So, the same thing that you do in May. So, ito yung uh, sales in May. And then, kukunin mo naman is 20% ng sales mo sa June to get your ending inventory. And you get 56,000. Ngayon, sa nanggaling tong 10,000 beginning inventory? The ending inventory of the previous period is the beginning inventory of the next period. Ganun po siya. Okay? So, 56,000 daw ang kailangan pero may beginning inventory kang 10,000. You just have to produce 46,000. And the same thing that you do also for June, 30,000 plus 5. Saan naman nakuha tong 5? So, kukunin natin si July kasi kailangan natin yung 25,000 units si July na nabenta at 20%, 5,000. 
total needs is 35,000 but we have 6,000 in beginning inventory again ending inventory of the previous period is the beginning inventory of the next period your production needs for June is 29,000 now, for the second quarter, this is what you do. Your budgeted sales is the total 20, 50, and 30, 100,000. And then your ending inventory is siyempre ending inventory ng quarter, which is siyempre itong 5,000. Okay? So, 105,000 less beginning inventory ng quarter. So, itong 4,000. Okay? And you get your total production needed of 101,000. You know you did it correctly when... 26,000 plus 46,000 plus 29,000 gives you 101,000. Okay? So, yan po yung production budget. Ibig sabihin po, in summary, ang production budget, pinapakita niya ilan po ba dapat yung i-produce natin base sa ilang units ang gusto nating ibenta, ilang units ang gusto nating nasa ending inventory, at ilang units yung nasa beginning inventory na hindi na natin kailangan i-produce kasi meron na pala. Okay? So, ganun po ang production budget. This will be forwarded in the direct materials budget. And that is what we will be next tackling about. Your direct materials budget. Siyempre, alam mo na kung ilang units yung ipoproduce. Ang tanong naman sa atin ngayon, ilang units ng materials ang kailangan nating i-purchase to answer our required production. At si Alvarez Manufacturing, 5 pounds of material are required per unit. So, sa isang unit daw po, 5 pounds yung materials. Management wants materials on hand at the end of each month equal to 10% of the following month's production. So, parang kanina lang din, 10% naman po ng uh, next month's production, yun yung gusto nilang ending inventory. Okay? Meron daw po tayong 13,000 pounds of material on hand at the end of March 31 or at the end of the first quarter. And the material cost is $40 per pound. So, paano po natin gagawin yung direct materials budget? Ito po yung ating production needs. So, yan yung magiging basis natin kung ilang pounds ng materials yung bibili natin. Okay, so this will be your direct materials budget. You first put your production needs for every month. So, 26,000, 46,000, and 29,000. Multiply mo siya ngayon, ilang pounds ba ang required kada isang unit? So, syempre, multiply mo sa 5. So, the total materials needed in production is 26,000 times 5, 130,000. 46,000 times 5, 230,000. And 29,000 times 5, 145,000. Pounds. Ang pag-uusapan na natin dito, yung pounds ng material or yung material requirement per unit kasi ang gusto nating malaman dito, ilang pounds ba talaga no, ang required na ng lahat ng ipoproduce natin. Okay? You add first your desired ending inventory which is just 10% of your next month's production. So, 230,000 times 10%, 23,000. And then, 145,000 times 10%, 14,500. You add uh, that para malaman mo ilang materials yung needed mo. Okay? So here, your total needed materials is 153,000 because you need to produce 130,000 and you need to retain 23,000 as ending inventory. So your total needed is 153. However, at the start of the period, you have 13,000. So ang kailangan mo lang i-purchase for April is 140,000 pounds. That's how you do it. Okay? And then again, the ending inventory for the previous period will be the beginning inventory of the next period, so on and so forth. Okay? So, sa production needs naman po for the whole quarter, uh, 46, uh, sorry, 26, 46, and 29, 101,000 times 5 is 505,000 pounds for the whole quarter. You add your ending inventory for the quarter, which is 11,500. So, 516,500 less beginning inventory for the quarter, which is 13,000. You get your ending, uh, sorry, you get your uh, purchasing needs, which is 503,500. Paano mo po siya i-interpret? Parang ganito. Ang kailangan ko sa production, 505,000 pounds ng materials. Meron ako kailangan i-retain na ending inventory na 11,500. So, ang lahat-lahat ng materials na kailangan ko is 516,500 pounds. E meron pa akong 13,000 dyan. So, ang bibilin ko na lang, 503,500. 
Okay? Sa so, ganun yung story niya. Now, kung purchases naman po ang pag-uusapan, you just have to multiply it by the material cost per unit. So, if your material needs to be purchased, uh, sorry, your your purchases needs to be 140,000, you just have to multiply it by the material cost per unit. And ang lalabas pong purchases for April is 56,000, for May is 88,600, and for June is 56,800. For a total of 201,400 cash outlay for material purchases. And that will be forwarded also in the schedule of cash disbursements related to materials. Ngayon, meron ka ngayong gagawin na cash disbursements for materials. Let's assume here for C. Alvarez, sabi nga po $40 per pound, Kalahati daw po ng purchases this month will be paid here in this month. And then, the other half is in the following month. So, 50-50, madali lang, 50-50. Ang kalahati, mababayaran mo ngayon, yung next na kalahati po is next month. Okay? And then, the March 31 accounts payable is 12000 Okay? So, you have now to prepare your expected cash disbursements like this. Charan. Okay. With your basis of the direct materials budget, so di ba ito na nakuha na natin yung purchases, 56, 88, 6, 56, 8. So let's assume na naka-accounts payable siya kasi magbaba, uh, hindi mo naman binabayaran ng buo. Okay? So for your cash disbursements for material purchases, your starting point siyempre is also yung accounts payable balance ng March 31, which is 12,000 na babayaran mo ng April. Now, your material... <laughs> your material purchases for April is 56,000. Kalahati daw po will be on that month and kalahati will be on May. Okay? And then for your May naman po, 88,600. Kalahati naman po is May. Kalahati is June. And then lastly, uh, which is 56,800 for June naman po, kalahati is babayaran mo din that month, 28,400. So, yung kalahati pa uli na 28,400, yun ang ending balance na accounts payable mo kasi yun na lang hindi mo bayad. Which becomes your um, balance na babayaran mo naman for uh, July. ba Parang ganon. Okay? So, you just add them horizon, uh, sorry vertically and that will be your total cash disbursements for material purchases. 40,000 for April, 72,300 for May, and 72,700 for June. Just add them up all and your quarter two cash disbursements for materials is 185,000. Okay? And that's how you prepare your expected cash disbursements for materials. That will then be forwarded later sa ating cash budget as part of your cash disbursements. Okay, so dahil meron na rin tayong required production, ano naman po yung requirement natin na gagawin na babayaran as to labor. At C. Alvarez, each unit of products requires 3 minutes of direct labor which is translated into hours, 0.05 hours. For purposes of this illustration, assume that C. Alvarez has no layoff policy, so bayad lahat ng empleyado at $10 per hour, regardless kung ilang hours ang um nagawa no kumbaga may, parang parang in a way it's fixed no kasi whatever level of production you do bayad ka ng 10 dollars eh for a certain guarantee which is ito nga sinabi the direct labor workforce will be paid for a minimum of 1500 hours per month so pag uh, sumobra ka yun yung babayaran sa yo pero pag nagkulang ka dyan sa 1,500 hours, babayaran sa'yo pa rin 1,500 hours. So, medyo mabait si company. Hindi siya isang, uh, parang hindi siya no work, no pay. Parang, kung ito lang nagawa mo, guaranteed ka pa rin bayad ng 1,500 hours. Ang bait, sana all. So, paano mo gagawin yung direct labor budget kung medyo may ganyang pakulo si company? Balik ka sa production needs mo. So, uh, 26,000 uh, needed to be produced for April. 46,000 needed to be produced for May and 29,000 for June. Ang required po is 0 0.05, 0 0.05 hours kada unit, which is 1,300 labor hours required for April, 2,300 labor hours for May, and 1,450 labor hours for June. Ngayon, kung medyo simple lang yung problem, kung ano yung iwa-work ni empleyado or ni laborer, kung 1,300, kung 2, 3, kung 1, 4, 50, kung straightforward yung problem, yun ay multiply mo sa $10 para makuha mo yung direct labor cost. Sana. Okay? So, kung ganun ka straightforward yung problem, that's how you just do it. You just have to multiply the required labor hours to the labor rate per hour and that's your direct labor cost. However, 
for purposes of our discussion here, medyo mabait si company, so meron po siyang guarantee. Check natin ngayon as to guarantee. For April, 1,300 hours lang. However, guaranteed kasi ang lahat ng empleyado at 1,500. So you have to compare. Kailangan mo ba silang bayaran sa April at 1,500, not at 1,300. Sa May naman po, 2,300 lahat. Ang guaranteed lang is 1,500. So babayaran mo sila at 2,300. Lahat yun, syempre. Okay? And then for June, ang nagawa lang is 1,450 labor hours. Pero 1,500 ang guaranteed, so 1,500. Kung ano po yung labor hours per payment na na-determine mo, yun yung mumultiply mo ng $10. And that is your budgeted direct labor cost. But again, if the problem is straightforward at wala pong guarantee sa problem na hinahanap, kung ano po yung required labor hours for production natin, you just have to simply multiply it diretso dito sa ating direct labor cost per hour to get your total direct labor cost. <laughs> okay, so yun po yung direct labor budget natin which will be forwarded later sa cash budget. Kasi syempre babayaran mo yung mga empleyado mo. Punta naman tayo ng overhead. At si Alvarez, manufacturing overhead is applied to the units of product on the basis of DLH. So, hindi na medyo, hindi na kayo pinahirapan sa problem. On the basis daw po ng direct labor hours, ang ating uh, application for manufacturing overhead. Okay? So, 0.05 hours lang din po siya. The variable manufacturing overhead rate is $20 per direct labor hour at meron daw po tayong fixed na $50,000 per month. Kaso, sa loob ng $50,000 na yan, meron mga non-cash na overhead cost. And best example, depreciation ng assets or plant assets. Diba? So, although i-re-record natin yung overhead mo at $50,000, pero as to cash disbursements, kailangan mong tanggalin sa 20,000 kasi non-cash overhead yan. And the best example of that is uh, depreciation of your plant assets. So let's prepare your manufacturing overhead budget. And it looks like this. It's now based on yung direct labor R. So yun yung gagamitin natin. Pero at this time, yung actual, syempre. No? Kasi hindi naman tayo nag-guarantee ng payment as to manufacturing overhead. Eh. ba? Diba? So kung ano yung talagang... Hindi actual, pero kung ano talaga yung hours na na-budget mo. Hindi ko pwedeng tawagin actual din kasi wala pa naman tayong actual production. Okay? So, 1,300, 2,300, 1,450. Ganun po siya. Okay? You just have to multiply it by the variable manufacturing overhead rate per hour. And that's how you get your variable manufacturing overhead cost. I-add mo lang diretso si fixed cost kasi syempre fixed yan. So, diretso add lang tayo. And you get your total manufacturing overhead cost. So, for April, it's 76,000, 96,000 for May, and 79,000 for June with a total in quarter 2 of 251,000. Yan po ang ating budgeted manufacturing overhead cost for the production. However, if we will be talking about the cash disbursements, you have to to make tanggal of the non-cash manufacturing overhead. Kasi nga po, non-cash siya. So, if you are talking about cash outlay or cash disbursements, you have to erase that. So, 76,000 minus 20,000, 56 for cash outlay. 96 minus 20, 76, and 79 minus 20, 59. So, as to cash outlay, it's 191,000. Now, if you are being asked of the overhead application rate, then that will just be 251,000 total overhead divided by 5,050 hours of production, which is $49.70. Your total manufacturing overhead cost is kailangan kukuhanin mo talaga yung cash disbursement niya. Okay? So, kung ano man po itong nandito sa baba, that will be regarded or forwarded rather later in your cash disbursements as well. Now, you can also now do your cost of goods sold budget kasi meron ka ng readily available information for your materials, for your labor, and you also have your overhead application rate. You can now prepare your budget for cost of goods sold. You just have to multiply the number of units that you need to sell for April, May, and June into your material requirements, labor, and overhead application rate. So for materials, you just have to multiply the number of units sold into 5 pounds multiplied by 0.40 per pound, which will give you material cost for each month of $40,160,000, which will total in quarter 2 of $200,000. For labor naman po, $10 ang labor rate times 0.0.05 based on the number of units. So ito po yun. 
And then, your overhead is number of units multiplied by 2.49. Ngayon, ang tanong, saan po galing yung 2.49? Your overhead application rate is 49.7. Apply it at 0.05 hours. Actually, ang lalabas po dyan is 2.485. So, igagawin natin uh, dollar and centavo, 2.49. Which will give you... 249,000 for your overhead. Your cost of goods sold for April is 99,800. Your cost of goods sold for May is 249,500. And for June is 149,700 which will give you 499,000. Okay po tayo. So, yan po yung ating paggawa ng cost of goods sold. This will be forwarded later sa ating pong budgeted income statement. So, actually, may sales ka na, may cost of goods sold ka na, makikreate mo na si gross profit later on. Diretso tayo ngayon, ngayon ng selling and administrative expense budget, basically operating expenses. At si Alvarez, the selling and administrative expense budget is divided into variable and fixed components. For variable selling and administrative expense, it's 0.5 per unit sold, and then ang fixed is 70,000 per month. The fixed selling and administrative expenses include 10,000 in costs that are non-cash. Basically, depreciation din. Okay? So, mahalaga rin po yan para ma-check natin mamaya for cash outlay. Okay. So, ito na yun. <laughs> so, you just have to multiply your budgeted sales in units by the variable SNA rate. And you get your variable SNA expenses. Simply add your fixed expenses and that's your total selling and administrative expenses. Pero kung cash outlay ang pag-uusapan, tatanggalin mo yung non-cash. So, 80 minus 10, 95 minus 10, and 85 minus 10, that is your total cash disbursements for your SNA expenses. Okay po tayo? So, ganun po yun. This will be forwarded in your budgeted income statement as operating expenses. Pero yung cash disbursements po natin will be forwarded later as cash disbursements sa cash budget. And we're ready to prepare your cash budget. So, for si Alvarez, i-assume daw po natin that there is an annual interest rate of 16%. And then, ang gusto daw po nila, may minimum cash balance silang 30,000 at the end of each period. Lahat daw po ng borrowing ginagawa on the first day of month and then ang repayment is last day of the month. Pwede rin per quarter. Ano naman problema? Okay, and then it, uh, they, uh, actually dapat quarter to eh. <laughs> Borrows on the first day of the month and repays loans on the last day of the quarter. Sorry, quarter dapat yan. And then, pays a cash dividend of 49,000 in April. And then purchases is, uh, may equipment purchases po tayo for May and then for June din. And then, meron po tayong cash balance at the start of the period of $40,000. So, this is how we do it. Okay? So, ito po ang ating uh, pro forma statement. Kung ano man yung beginning cash balance mo, add mo lang yung cash collections mo, which is kukunin mo kanina sa schedule of cash collections, and that will be your total cash available. And then, ide-deduct mo po lahat ng cash disbursements mula sa mga cash payment schedules na ginawa natin on materials, labor, overhead, Selling and administrative expense at kung sakaling meron kang purchases ng equipment and payment ng dividends. You just get the total disbursement. Si compare mo ngayon si cash available at saka si cash disbursement para malaman mo kung may excess cash ka or deficient ka sa cash. Okay? And then, malalaman mo din dyan kung meron kang financing na needed. Meron ka bang borrowing na gagawin to maintain the 30,000? Or pwede na lang tayo magbayad ng utang at magkano yung interest na babayaran natin to get your ending cash balance. So, for April, kayo na lang po mag-trace galing po sa mga nauna nating schedules na ginawa kanina. I-interpret na lang natin. Your total cash available is 210,000 and your cash disbursement is 230. So, mas malaki si disbursement, deficient ka ng 20,000. Eh, ang kailangan nating minimum cash requirement is 30,000. So, para mabura yung 20,000 na deficiency in cash, kailangan mong mangutang ng 50,000. Yun po yung borrowing needed or financing needed mo. 
to arrive at the ending cash balance of 30,000. Siyempre, kung ano yung ending cash balance mo, yun yung gagamitin mo next month. Then, you compare the cash available to the cash disbursement. Nagkatao naman, excess ang cash to 30,000. Ngayon, 30,000 na to. So, wala na tayong gagawin. Kasi 30,000 naman yung requirement mo. Eh, naka-30,000 na naman na tayong excess cash. So, wala nang problema. In case pong kulang, edi eh, magbabarrow ka uli. Kung, ka, kung sobra naman po, baka pwede natin gamitin bilang pambayad ng utang or hindi po kaya eh, stay lang. Okay? Parang ganon. And then for June naman po, syempre you start again with 30 and then magbabayad na tayo ng utang which is 50,000 and meron tayong 2,000 na interest. San po galing yung 2,000 na interest? Di ba nang utang po tayo ng 50,000 at 16% interest rate? Eh, 3 months lang po ito. So, i-accru mo for 3 months. 50,000 times 16% times uh, 3 over 12, that is 2,000. Okay? 95,000 ng excess cash, pero magbabayad ka ng 50 at magbabayad ka ng 2. So, 95 minus 52, your ending cash balance is 43. Pasok siya sa minimum requirement mo na 30,000. Just get the total of them to prepare the cash budget for the quarter. So, pwede ka na ngayon gumawa ng budget and income statement. Okay? So, paano po gawin yan? Siyempre, meron ka pong sales budget which is uh, nandyan po lahat ng sales mo. So, sales for the quarter is 1 million. Meron ka rin po kaninang cost of goods sold budget. So, yun po ilalagay mo as cost of goods sold. And then, that will lead you in the calculation of your gross profit. Tapos, siyempre, meron ka rin schedule ng selling and administrative expenses budget. So, lalagay mo rin po siya doon. Okay? And you will get your operating income. And don't forget, meron kang interest payment nung month ng June na 2000. Baka makalimutan mo. And that is your net income. So, yun po yun. Siyempre, meron din po tayong mga other schedules na makakatulong po sa atin in the preparation of your budgeted balance sheet. Like your statement of retained earnings. Actually, hindi ko na ilagay agad, no? Pero mamaya pa siya lalabas. The beginning balance of your retained earnings is 146.150. Add mo siyempre si net income galing sa budgeted income statement mo and then any uh, dividends declared or paid, lalagay mo din yon. So ending balance ng retained earnings, tas ganun lang po ulit for May and June. Since wala naman po tayong dividends that time, wala kayong mamainos. And this is for your quarter. Siyempre gagawa ka rin ng schedule for accounts receivable. So dyan mo mailalagay yung beginning and ending balances mo na receivable. So beginning balance, add credit sales. Ano yung credit sales? Yung mismong sales natin. Okay? Pero ide-deduct mo si collections on accounts receivable. So, saan mang gagaling yan? Lahat ng collections mo ng cash na nanggaling sa expected cash collection schedules mo kanina. And that is your ending balance of accounts receivable, but you deduct your bad debts. Okay? So, yun po yun. i na lang natin please on this problem na yung bad debts expenses already part of your operating expenses kanina. Kasi yung uh, inadapt natin problem for this uh, discussion is medyo may mga assumption. Okay? So, ganun na lang po. Okay? So, makukuha mo yung ending balances niya at net realizable value. Kung makapansin nyo, may 75,000 dito. Uh, yan po yung uh, 25% na hindi pa natin nare-receive for the month of June na sa July pa mare-receive. So, dapat magtutugma-tugma yun. Okay? And then, for raw materials, you just have to multiply your ending inventory to your material cost per unit para alam mo yung ire-report mo mamaya na raw materials inventory sa balance sheet. And then, ito rin naman po yung sa finished goods. So, ganun din po. You multiply it by the unit cost of 4.99. Paano po kinuha yung 4.99 na unit cost? 2 dollars para sa materials, 0.5 para sa labor, and 2.49 para sa overhead. Okay? So, 4.99 po siya. And that's your finished goods inventory. And then, for your accounts payable, just have, uh, you just have to start with the beginning balance, add any credit purchases, which is your purchases of materials, and then deduct mo any payment that you have. So, yan. So, prepare din tayo ng mga budgeted schedules. Now, for your balance sheet, medyo yung nilift nating problem kasi is medyo straightforward lang. So, ito daw po yung mga ibang balances na uh, naging unchanged or your starting point. May land na 50,000, common stock, and then equipment. Pero wag nyo kakalimutan dun sa equipment na nagkaroon tayo ng equipment purchases nung May at June. So, iya-add nyo yan dyan. 
And let's assume na yung equipment na yan ay net na accumulated depreciation. Kasi, uh, inassume lang din po kasi kanina sa problem natin yung amount ng depreciation para mas madali nyo lang maintindihan or maikonekta yung pagdededuct ng non-cash expenses kanina. Kaya medyo nag-assume-assume lang yung, yung problem ng amount ng depreciation. Okay? So, coming from that info, ito na po yung budget and balance sheet natin. Paano mo kukunin yung cash? Siyempre, yung ending balance ng cash mo on your cash budget, 43,000. And then, for your accounts receivable, so kanina may ginawa na tayong schedule ng accounts receivable. So, yun po yung 75,000. Tapos, as to raw materials naman po, yun po yung 4,600. For your finished goods naman po is 24,950. Wala naman po tayong biniling land, so yun pa rin yung land. Tapos sa equipment naman po, isiyaad mo lang lahat ng pinurchase mong equipment. Now for your liabilities and equity, you just add your um, accounts payable and then wala naman po nagbago sa common stock natin. And then syempre meron tayong ending balance ng retained earnings na 336,150. For total assets and total liabilities and equity of 564,000. 550. At meron po kayong freebie sa akin. Siyempre, medyo mahirap sundan habang pinapanood nyo lang po sa video. So, ibibigay ko po yung mismong Excel file sa inyo. You can download the MS Excel file of the budgeting process we did in this lesson for your personal usage and learning. However, please do not re-upload them in different educational websites. So, kung okay lang po sana, sa atin-satin sa lang po na mga viewers. Okay? The link is available sa baba po in the description box. And that has been our discussion for business planning and short-term budgetary systems. And our next lesson is differential cost analysis. Again, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button. Comment down your questions, suggestions, and reactions. This has been Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you and have a great day. Sarangeo. Wherever I go